<laughs> it, was, it was awesome, so thank you for that. Well, today we're going to be reading Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. If you have your Bible, I encourage you to follow along with me on that. That's Romans chapter 12, 1 to 8. If you don't have your Bible, it will be on the wall behind me in a moment. And as we uh, look at this scripture, we're going to try and answer a simple question. And that question is, what does worship really look like? You know, even though I, I, I like to talk, you know, and just ask my wife, she'll agree. <laughs> I like to talk. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you that English wasn't my strong, my strongest subject in grade school. Uh, I had a hard time with all those rules, grammar, you know, those adjectives and adverbs and everything else. I was like, oh, man, I hated those classes. <laughs> Can I say that? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, needless to say, I have a grammatical question for you. And uh, when you think, and here it is, when you think of worship, do you see worship as a noun or a verb? A verb. You see, worship as that thing that happens before the pastor speaks. Is, is that thing that we just did before, is that, that's the thing that we talk about, the worship, or is it something more? It's a way of life. way of life. I like that. Amen. Amen. There you go. You got it. Well, I'm, I'm done with my message. No. <laughs> Today we're going to explore that. I'm going to hopefully remind some of what it is, and maybe I'm going to be teaching something new, which is pretty cool. So, as we move forward, we'll, we'll do this together, and we'll try, and, uh, we'll try and expand the answer to that question. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for your word, and we pray, God, that as we come to it, that you will help open it up to us. Give us... Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, all that you want us to receive. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so we're going to read Romans 12, 1 to 8. There we go. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Well, friends, I've been here for almost two months now. I, I, that's amazing. That time has flown by that fast. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying the fact that not only do I get to be a part of this awesome church, but I'm enjoying the fact that I'm getting new, getting new friends in my life. You know, I'm making new friends, and that is a great thing. I'm one of those people who loves getting to know other people. I find it exciting. You know, King David says that we are wonderful. Made. And it's so true. Each of us are so different. If my son was here, he'd tell him, he would probably say, yeah, Dad, you are different. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about it, we are wonderfully made. You know, each of us are different from one another. We are unique beings, and no two of us are completely alike when we compare ourselves to each other. You know, it goes from our fingerprints and our DNA to our personality to the gifts and talents each of us 
are blessed with. Our scripture tells us in verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. We're all unique. When was the last time you uh, thanked God for how he has made and blessed you? Hopefully it's not when you're standing in the mirror and just saying, <laughs> thank you God. <laughs> but really, when was the last time you thanked God for how he has made you? There's no one else like you. You're you. You're unique. And God created you in that way, and that's, that's totally awesome. You know, I look out at each of you. I do. I look out at each of you here today, and I can see that each of you are special. And I can hear my son again going, yeah, Dad, you're special. <laughs> you can tell it's a real love relationship, right? <laughs> Anyway, you know, and together, each of us being unique, we're brought together. And as a church, we carry this amazing array of gifts and talents. And, and I know that, I know that because you are here, a part of this church, that the church is better for it. Because you're part of it. You know, you can't do church alone. You know, none of you were here, and I came here Sunday morning, and I sat in here. It wouldn't be church. I just can't do it alone. It just doesn't work. Remember what our scripture says in verse 4. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we Though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Yes, we're uniquely made. God did not create us, He did not form us using a cookie cutter in which each of us look the same, or act the same, or are gifted in the same way. You know, take ministers, for example, those who answer the pastoral call. You know, they come from all sorts of backgrounds. They're very rarely ever similar as people. They are men. They are women who come from different backgrounds. They have different levels of education. They have vastly different experiences, strengths, and abilities. No minister is the same. And as you get to know me, as you get to know me, you'll see the differences that make me unique. Say, compared to maybe Pastor Clarence or Pastor Al, who both served as your pastors here at this wonderful church before me. And that's okay. It's a good thing. Just imagine if every one of us were the same. Imagine if all of us were Pastor Chris for a second. <laughs> running here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, what a boring, and this is from the guy who is Pastor Chris, right? What a boring place this would be. I don't know if we'd get much work done. <laughs> you know? It would just be boring. I wouldn't want to have a bunch of me's here. I mean, it would be just it would be mundane, it would be dull, it would be small. And I got a pretty good uh, self-esteem here. I like myself. I'm not knocking myself down. Boy, not to have you guys? Wow. No thank you. So our job then, and this is this is not for uh, this isn't just for the ministers, right? Our, our job then for all of us is to seek out and discover those things that make us unique, those gifts and talents that God has equipped and blessed us with. And then to use them, not just for our own benefit, but for the community. That's the part of the body, that's, that's what we call church. We are a community. We are the church. And we belong to each other. As our scripture says, starting in verse 6, 
If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, I hope you notice, guys, when we read that, when we read our scripture, that it doesn't say your gifts, to use your gifts half-heartedly. It doesn't say, okay, hold back on your gifts and just dish it out as little as possible. You know, it doesn't tell you to use your gifts grudgingly. It doesn't say, hey, when someone asks you if you can help, go, oh, if I have to. <laughs> you know, it doesn't say in our scripture that we are to hold back. It doesn't say that we are to uh, be complaining when we are forced to use our gifts and our talents. We're supposed to use them. And I love this. I'm going to re re say it. If it is serving, then serve. If you're gift to serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. You know, if it is to encourage, then encourage. If it is giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show, show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, all of us are gifted and have things that we're really good at. But none of us are good at everything. I've had to learn that lesson for myself. It's a hard lesson. When you want to be independent, that lone wolf, it doesn't work. You know, none of us are blessed with every gift. If you think you're better than everyone else, let me tell you, you've got a problem. We need to be real, and we should be aware of our strengths and our weaknesses. You know, our scripture says in verse 3, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought to, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Friends, this isn't a call for false humility. You know, just because you're a Christian, if you're good at something, you're not supposed to play it down. Right? And that's, if someone, you know, you know, this worship team was awesome. Right? And if I come up to any of those members of the worship team and I say, hey guy, you did a great job, they're not supposed to go, I can't play. That's false humility. That's not real. They know they can play. <laughs> right? You know you can play? Alright, good. You know you can sing? Yeah. <laughs> Good example. <laughs> you know, we're not supposed to have false humility. And we're not supposed to be knocking ourselves down. You know, being Christian doesn't mean, hey, you're supposed to be have low self-esteem, right? Pull out the whip and start, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> you know, I'm worthless, I'm worthless. It's not that. God made you. God made you with those gifts. If you're if you're complaining, or if you knock those gifts down, you know what? You're knocking down what God gave you. Right? You know, if you're good at talking, then talk. <laughs> you know, if you're good at teaching, teach. Right? Don't go. I'm not good at much. God made you. He made you the way you are. When you're knocking yourself down, you're knocking God. We don't want you doing that. You know, it calls for us to have sober judgment. Sober judgment. That means that you're supposed to take a good look at yourself. Take a good look at yourself, right? And make an accurate assessment. Be real. Each of us has things that we're strong at, and each of us also have areas that we're weak in. Our scripture calls us to be humble. Humble, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. That doesn't mean we're supposed to put ourselves down or think of ourselves less than we ought to. 
Now, how many of us here, guys, I have a question for you. This is an example that happened in my life. How many of us here are hockey fans? Who likes to watch hockey? A couple people. Wow, not very many. Montreal. I was going to ask who, who loves Toronto here. And, yeah, uh, I'll pray for you guys. <laughs> When I, can't, when I was at North Bay and I can't, when, went there to Candy Day, that was one, one of the questions I got asked. Are you a hockey fan? I'm like, yeah, I like hockey. And he said, what's your favorite team? I said, Ottawa Senators. Boo! <laughs> I just, yeah, I, exactly. I thought, oh, I'm out the door. <laughs> I like hockey. Okay, this is a confession. I like, I like hockey. I like watching the hockey, you know, if you go to the stadium and arena and watch that. I like that. I like it. But I'm not a major hockey fan. Like, I'm not one of those guys who can, you know, t I can't even tell you every single team name. Right? I'm sorry. That's that. I, I'm not one of those guys who knows every hockey player name and every stat. Like, that. that's my brother. I mean, he reads those stat books. It's worth like, who does that? You know, that's my brother and he loves that. So good stuff for him. But uh, I, I can't even name 10 players uh, that are currently playing. And, and it's just how I am, right? Go to the hockey game, great. I'll cheer on the Ottawa Senators, but, you know, <laughs> ask me who's playing on the team. Uh, <laughs> they got great jerseys. Leave me alone. All right. So uh, who here has ever gone to Canada Wesleyan Church? It's in Ottawa. Anyone had the opportunity to go to Canada? It's now called the bridge. Okay. Well, I gotta tell you that that's that's the largest uh, Wesleyan church in our district. Yeah, that's pretty neat. If you're driving uh, in Ottawa, you're going across Ottawa. It's on the uh, west end, and uh, you can see it right from the four uh, four uh, seventeen. It's a nice building and all that. So years ago, when I was part of Southgate Community Church, which was a church plant in Kentville. Um, I got asked to go to uh, the bridge and give them an update. And I, you know, I got basically invited to go to the biggest church and speak. And this was before I was a ministerial student, so, you know, I didn't do a lot of speaking back then. And so I went there and, you know, I get in there and there's like 800 people, right? And I, you know, I felt like I was about that big and, you know, I'm like... <laughs> it's like, great. And so I gave them a little update about how this church plan was doing, tell them what we were working on and all that. And it was good. And then they had two services. So, you know, pictured a pile of people and then a pile of other people. And, you know, I did it twice. And in between was a refreshment time. And so I got to, you know, meet some people there while sipping on my juice and everyone else having their coffee. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were just talking. And one particular person who, uh, who I was talking to uh, just turned around and there he was. So I started talking to him. He had a cast from his hand up to his shoulder. And uh, I asked him, oh, man, what happened to you? And, he, and all he said was, oh, I, I heard it at work. And before I could ask him how he heard it at work, he would ask me more questions about the church plant and all this kind of stuff. He was interested about what I did, uh, and uh, I, I confessed to him that I was a little nervous about speaking at such a big church. And he was telling me, oh, you did great. You did a good job. And I really liked what you shared and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, that refreshment time was over, the second service was about to start, so I went in and didn't see him again until the next day when I grabbed the paper and he was on the front, front page of the paper. It was Mike Fisher. He played center <laughs> for the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> you know, he's married to Carrie Underwood. You know, I uh, did some research there last night on him. You know, the guy's worth over $100 million, all right? So here he is, Wesleyan Church. I'm coffee with everyone. Just enjoying, enjoying the morning. And, uh, you know, he didn't flaunt the fact that he was a millionaire. He didn't flaunt the fact that he was famous. 
even though I didn't know them, didn't want the fact that so many other people probably would have been happy to be in my place, have that little chat with him. He didn't make me feel lower than I was. He wasn't puffed up. You know, he was just being real. And I've never forgotten that example of humility. You know, he was just a down-to-earth person who treated me with respect. That's what we're called to do. Don't think less of yourself. Don't think higher than yourself. Just be real. And so, we know that each of us are gifted. We know that each of us have been given gifts that God has equipped us with, and we have talents that we have learned, which God has given us the ability to learn from, or learn. So we know all of these things that we do, everything, it's, it's all because of God. And so we've been given this, all these unique individual set of gifts and talents, and we put them together. Your gifts and your talents, 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 they all come together. And we call this church. It's family. It's family. I like that. It's one body. And those gifts that we are blessed with are given to us in order to what? Use them for ourselves? No. We use them for the body, for the community. We belong to. We've learned that God doesn't call us to be prideful or to think lower of ourselves, but to have that sober judgment about ourselves, that clear-headed assessment. But how do we do that? How do we know what we're gifted in? There are many tests and evaluations, and maybe you've done some of those tests. Maybe you've had those personality tests. Maybe you've done those spiritual gift tests, those Questionnaires that kind of help point you and lead you to see what uh, things that you're, you might be good at and are God giving you. And, and those are all good. Those are all good things. Don't get me wrong. They can help you kind of get a better feel for where you can best serve and do and all that kind of stuff. But if that's all you're doing, if that's all you're doing is filling out questionnaires and looking at the results, and uh, you're missing something very very important. Now the key to finding the key to finding out your gifts really is from you. It's connected in seeking out God and His direction for your life. It's seeking out God. If you want to know what your gifts are, if you want to know what your mission in life is, you want to know how, how best you can fit into the church, stop looking at your navel. Start looking at God. It says in our, our scripture, in verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you're seeking out, if you're seeking out by your own strength and understanding what gifts God has given you, you're missing out. Put first things first. You know, that's the important thing. Do the first thing first. I had a boss who used to always say to me, when we'd get together in the morning and I had the list of jobs he wanted me to do, he'd say, first I want you to go over here and I want you to install this light. First I want you to go over there and I want you to install that plug. First I want you to do that service call because of this. And I used to have to say to him, okay, out of those first, which first do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, I was like, you just because you know he was just thinking out loud going oh yeah so put first things first and that is you need to be seeking out God you need to be spending time with God you know so often people say I can't hear God and then I ask them a simple question well how long have you been praying how much time do you put in your prayer life how much time do you read the Bible and those people who usually say they can't hear God, usually if they're being truthful, will admit, well, I don't really read my Bible, or I don't really pray that much. I, I say a prayer before I go to bed. I say grace. You know, you, you can't hear God if you're not taking time to listen. 
Right? So what's the point of all this? The answer is, is simple. If in life we hunger for purpose, you know, we ask ourselves, what is this all about? You know, what does it mean? Why are we here? What does all this mean? What's the point? Remember how I began my message today and asked you if worship is a noun or a verb? Well, friends, I hope I either am reminding you or that I'm showing you something that you haven't uh, picked up yet. But worship is a verb. It's an action. God has created us to be unique, and together with our own unique strengths and abilities and weaknesses, we come together to form one body, one community, one family, one church. We do this together. We live life together in community. We love each other. We hold on to each other. We help each other in the bad times and we celebrate with each other in the good times. Worship isn't just singing songs. Thank goodness, as a pastor, I dread every time I have to lead singing. I don't like doing it. It's not my thing. I'll do it when I have to. It's like grudgingly, right? <laughs> Worship it to worship and sing God songs to God. That is worship, but that's not the only thing. You know, you don't have to get up on this platform and sing songs to God and help the church worship God through music to use your gifts. Our scripture says in verse 1: Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. That means give. And use your gifts. Not just once. Not just go, alright, here, I've done it. I'm good now. Living sacrifices. Every day. Every day, you get up and you give. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So I encourage you, spend time with God. You want to know your gifts? Spend time with God. Spend time in His Word. Spend time praying. Allow Him to transform you. Be open to His leading. Be ready to serve. Seek out those ways that you can make a difference for God in this community that we call church. Be ready to share your gifts, and together we will know what it means to offer God true worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, and for the truth that is found in it, and for the instructions that we see on how to live life. God, we thank you for this church, and when I say church, I don't mean the building, the facilities that we're in. Though those, it is an amazing building. And we give you thanks for that. We thank you, God, for the people who make up this church. We thank you for the love that we share with each other. We thank you for each of them and their own unique strengths and abilities and talents and gifts. And God, we thank you that they are part of our lives. And we have a chance, God. We thank you that we have a chance to be a part of their lives and to make that difference. Thank you, God, that we can worship you by loving each other and serving with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.